joining us. The newly constituted board of the NNPC is inaugurated and the marching orders handed down for these tested and trusted veterans of many professional and corporate wars. It's a fresh challenge and peculiar times socioeconomically, but they are good to go. The presidents and GMDs charged to them are expectedly loaded. You don't want to miss it. Minister of State Petroleum expresses his concern about strengthening the gas value chain and he advocates for gas reforms from the most important standpoint, pricing. COVID-19 and the very enduring efforts at infrastructure provision being championed by the NNPC. While the site has been picked for the Infectious Diseases Medical Center for the Southeast in Imo, a medical center is commissioned in Asaba this time put together by LNPC and her joint venture partners. Check out the facilities in the details. PPMC's Customer Express and NNPC's Retail Limited Digitization Program are more or less programs of the same semblance. But in separate accounts, we will look at their progress, impact, and projections. My name is Akin Agbijili. This is All and Gas Forum. Let me express the gratitude of the President and the people of Nigeria to the Honorable Minister of State Petroleum Group, Managing Director of NMPC, and all their partners within the oil and gas industry for this noble gesture and course they have decided to pursue. The presidential flag off of the construction of the Ajokuta Kaduna Kanu Gas Pipeline project holds on Tuesday, 30th June 2020, time 11 a.m. prompt. At two locations, Ajokuta Kogi State and Rigachikun Kaduna State, the flag off would be performed virtually by His Excellency President Muhammadu Buhari GCFR from the presidential villa Abuja. The Ajokuta Kaduna Kanu Gas Pipeline is a section of the Trans Nigeria Gas Pipeline with a capacity to transport about 2.2 billion cubic feet of gas per day. It will boost domestic gas consumption, industrialization, and power generation. Announcer NNPC Management. The new members of the Board of Directors of the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, have been implored to bring their wealth of experience to bear in supporting the NNPC to grow the economy and create wealth for the nation. President Mohamed Buhari, represented by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources and alternate chairman of the board, Chief Timipre Silva, made the call while inaugurating the NNPC board at the NNPC Towers in Abuja. The president urged the board to leave no stone unturned in ensuring that NNPC delivers on all its strategic objectives. We are all aware that the federal government under the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari is committed to transparency and accountability. We should bear this in mind as we provide quality direction and strategic oversight of the corporation's activities. In his remarks, the group managing director of the NNPC, Mala Milikari, assured of the readiness of the management to align with the board, stressing that the NNPC under his watch was determined to deliver on her core mandates to Nigerians. Relying on technology and automation to get things done and also re-engineering the company in a manner that will deliver on its start, which is to align with Mr. President's commitment to transparency and accountability that we do things right, we follow procedures in everything we do, we ensure that there is alignment of all parties in the, in the engagement and through our governance processes. The board members are Minister of State for Petroleum Resources Chief Timipre Silva the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Finance, Dr. Mahmoud Issa Duse, and the GMD of NNPC, Malamele Kiari. Others are Chief Pius Akinye Lure, Senator Magnus Abe, 
Dr. Tajuddin Umar, Dr. Stephen Dike, Malam Mohamed Lawal, and Mrs. Lami Ahmed. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Chief Timmy Presilva, has implored the Committee on Gas Sector-Wide Review on the need to come up with appropriate domestic gas pricing framework to bolster gas utilization in the country. Speaking while inaugurating the committee at a low-key, partly virtual occasion, Chief Silva emphasized the need for an appropriate pricing system which would be of great advantage to the manufacturing industry, the Nigerian populace, and would generally boost the gas industry both at home and abroad. A significant element of the federal government's economic development plan is to move Nigeria from bring crude oil export-based economy to an attractive oil and gas-based industrial economy. Chief Silver also announced that the flag of the AKK pipeline construction has been slitted for 30th June 2020 by President Muhammad Buhari. On his part, the Chief Operating Officer Gas and Power of the NNPC and Chairman of the Committee, Engineer Yusuf Usman, pledged the preparedness of the committee to deliver on her mandate. We want to assure you, Honorable Minister, that we will look at the sector, both from the upstream, midstream, downstream, and compare with what is obtainable internationally, that this year, 2020, will surely be our gas, and we will be discharging our assignment with this perspective in mind. The groundbreaking ceremony for a construction of a 200-bed emergency and infectious diseases hospital for Eastern Region has been executed in Imo State University Teaching Hospital, Olu. The choice of the location of the hospital was agreed upon by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, and Seplat Petroleum Development Company, PLC, joint venture partnership. Minister of State for Petroleum, Chief Timmy Pre Silva, disclosed this while performing the groundbreaking ceremony, saying the project was one of the three categories of the NNPC and CEPLAT intervention initiatives aimed at assisting states in the six geopolitical zones to curb the spread of COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria. Today's event is an important one, as it puts the nation's oil and gas industry in a good stead to bequeath a sustainable impact and legacy on our healthcare delivery system in the southeast zone. Speaking at the groundbreaking ceremony, the governor of Imo State, Senator Hope Uzodima, expressed gladness over the project, whose completion would save lives and make Imo people and environs much healthier. The construction of this gigantic specialist hospital is a bold step towards the fulfillment of government's commitment to a post-COVID-19 healthy Imo State. All thanks to Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation and CEPLAT. In his remark at the occasion, the group managing director of NNPC, Mala Mele Kiari, revealed that a modular refinery would be sited in the state soon. We're also looking forward to establishing another modular refinery, uh, specifically a condenser refinery in Imo State. CEPLAT chairman, Dr. Ambrose Ojiako, who also spoke at the event, stated that the project was an outcome of NNPC's collaboration with CEPLAT, to support Imo State towards strengthening the state's effort in its fight against the management of the current pandemic and to be a center for the treatment of all forms of infectious diseases. The NMPC Supply Joint Venture is committed to the long-term development of Imo State. In a related development, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, and its joint venture partners, Nigeria Ajib Oil Company, NAOC, and Oando Oil Limited have inaugurated a COVID-19 temporary medical infrastructure in Asaba Delta State. Speaking at the occasion, Senator Okoa applauded the NNPC and her joint venture partners for setting up the medical center to combat COVID-19, stressing that the gesture would go a long way in saving many lives. We truly want to thank you for this facility. We thank you for the initial support that you brought uh, to us in terms of personal protective equipment. Uh, and the ambulance that was sent before now uh, came in through the oil companies. Malam Kiari stated that the medical center was part of the oil and gas industry intervention 
implemented in various states across Nigeria in response to the outbreak of the pandemic, and it was aimed at providing a critical infrastructure to stem the spread of COVID-19 within Delta State and its environs. Our plan is to build permanent structure in, in the six geopolitical zones, at least two in each of the geopolitical zones, but to particularly build additional two in the Niger Delta. And in some states, we have more than one facility to be built. Vice Chairman and Managing Director of now, Sir Lorenzo Fiorillo, who was represented by the company's social projects manager, Chinidum Ajabo. He said Naok and its joint venture partners had over the years carried out sustainable initiatives in its host communities through various human and social economic development programs, including access to quality health care. It gives me mixed feelings to be here today. First, that of delight on this official occasion of the commissioning and handover ceremony of the oil and gas industry COVID-19 temporary medical infrastructure sponsored by NAOC JV as part of the oil and gas industry intervention in Delta State. A petroleum product marketing company, PPFC, one of the downstream subsidiaries of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has described the web-based customer express solution of the company as a catalyst for seamless and hitch-free end-to-end business transactions geared towards transparency and efficiency. The solution is a tool that has digitized buying and selling of petroleum products, application for bulk purchase agreement, BPA, and generation of tickets between the company and its marketers. Petroleum products marketing company, PPMC Managing Director, Mr. Musa Lawan, made this known in an interview in Abuja. It has brought a lot of uh, efficiencies. So, for example, uh, the first one I can reckon with is the speed with which you will now be able to go online and just procure your products. What that does also is it eliminates error in the process of procurement. It improves efficiency in the sense that uh, there will be no paperwork. You don't need any paperwork. It's done online. Uh, the discretion that it's often associated with the process is basically eliminated. According to him, the system would enable the marketers to order for products at the comfort of their homes or from anywhere in the world and receive updates on any transaction made. Actually, this is a welcome development and it's consistent or coterminous with the tape agenda of our group managing director on performance excellence. As part of concerted efforts to enhance better service delivery of petroleum products to motorists across the country, NNPC Retail Limited, a subsidiary of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has gone live with a robust digitization program. Speaking on behalf of the Managing Director, NNPC Retail Limited, Sir Billy Okoye, the Manager Information Communication Technology, Mr. Victor Anidobe, said that the digitization program would ensure process agility for all its services. He stated that the program, which would reduce human discretion in its processes, We're going to focus First of all, on the structure, on the main core infrastructure, which is uh, the SAP. Make sure we close out any gap that requires human intervention. This will affect both our company-owned stations and our affiliates. The ICT expert stated that the full automation of the processes would make business transactions between the company and her various external stakeholders seamless, faster, efficient, and transparent. We're looking at service stations, making them smarter. How do you want to make them smarter? Is a person can go to his, uh, to his station and actually buy his own gas. While he's buying his own gas, well, the data we're collecting tells us how long the person has spent at that particular um, environment. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has said that 218.37 billion cubic feet of natural gas was produced in March 2020, translating to an average daily production of 7493.65 million standard cubic feet per day. 
This was contained in NNPC monthly financial and operations report for March 2020, which further explained that 3119.89 billion standard cubic feet of gas was produced for the period March 2019 to March 2020, representing an average daily production of 7912.05 million standard cubic feet per day during the period. The report said that period-to-date production from joint ventures, production sharing contracts, and NPDC contributed about 69.37%. 21.67% and 8.95% respectively to the total national gas production. Out of the 218.37 billion standard cubic feet of gas supplied in March 2020, according to the report, 120.73 billion standard cubic feet of gas was commercialized consisting of 33.45 billion standard cubic feet and 87.28 billion standard cubic feet for the domestic and export market, respectively, translating to 1235.56 million standard cubic feet of gas per day to the domestic market, and 3817.40 million standard cubic feet of gas per day supplied to the export market for the month. Good evening and welcome to another interesting edition of the Feedback Segment. My name is Julia. This week our roving camera is asking the public the difference between upstream and downstream sectors in the oil and gas industry. The, the, the upstream sector is where we get the crude oil. When we get the crude oil, we we'll refine it, then we get to the downstream sector. The upstream sector is where the oil is being discovered, you understand? And the downstream sector is where it is being distributed for the end users. The upstream sector basically is um, where the, uh, the oil is sourced from, and the downstream sector is where the oil is distributed from. Upstream is basically for drilling and, uh, of uh, crude oil, uh, while the midstream is in charge of the transportation of the products to all the depots. The downstream sector is basically moving the the, the product from all the depots across the length and breadth of the country to the final consumer. Downstream involves taking the processed crude, either you transport it, transportation is not part of the downstream, you transport your crude, processing of the crude, like through refining, crude oil refining. The upstream sector covers all activities related to searching for crude oil and gas, recovering and producing hydrocarbons from underground or underwater fields, while downstream sector is the refining of crude oil and gas, processing, marketing, supply and distribution of petroleum products derived from crude oil and natural gas. Well, that's it on this segment. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to this segment of the program. My name is Tola Gobuade. Did you know that the Ajaokuta Kaduna Kanu Gas Pipeline, AKK, is a 40 inch by 614 kilometers tied to the existing Oben Ajaokuta Pipeline? Did you know that the AKK is expected to be fed from the existing Extraverse Lagos Pipeline System and Obiafu Obricom Oben? OB3 pipeline? Did you know that the AKK will supply gas to three independent power plants in Abuja, Kaduna and Kanu? The AKK project is geared towards improving domestic gas supply, power generation and industrialization. Did you also know that the AKK project will be flagged off by President Mohamed Buhari on Tuesday 30th, June 2020? Now you know. Please stay tuned for the rest of the program. Hello and welcome to Global Crude Oil Outlook. Oil slipped below $40 per barrel after a more than 5% fall in the previous session 
as record high United States crude inventories and the resurgence in coronavirus cases cast doubt on a recovery in fuel demand. Brent crude fell 19 cents or 0.5% to $40.12 per barrel and traded as low as $39.47. The global benchmark dropped 5.4% during the week. United States West Texas Intermediate WTI crude fell 49 cents or 1.3% to $37.52 per barrel. United States crude stocks rose 1.4 million barrels to a record high, the Energy Information Administration said during the week. This hits crude prices as other details the EIA reported such as fall in gasoline stockpiles lent limited support. Oil and equities were also pressured by a rise in coronavirus cases. New infections have surged in some states of the United States of America and Australia posted its biggest daily rise in cases in two months. A resurgence of the novel coronavirus would weigh on oil demand, which has been recovering as some places lifted lockdowns and economic growth. The International Monetary Fund during the week predicted a deeper global recession than previously thought, which is also weighing on sentiment. A record supply cut by the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries OPEC and Allies has supported the oil market, which is much stronger compared to April when Brent hit a 21-year low below $16 per barrel and analyst crude went negative. Investors are waiting to see if the producers known as OPEC Plus extend their record cut beyond July. Angola is working on plans to cut production further to compensate for missing its organization of the petroleum exporting countries OPEC Plus targets in May and June. The Market Intelligence Department of the NNPC London office reports Angola National Oil Company Sunangol, which draws up the country's loading programs, has scheduled exports of 1.143 million barrels per day for August. That would make it compliant with the 1.18 million barrels per day quota that was set for Angola in the early months of the OPEC Plus production cut deal agreed in April. However, Saudi Arabia is insisting that those countries which missed their targets in May and June should catch up by making deeper cuts in July, August and September. And that's it on this segment of the program. I am Owigo Okolo. May I, on behalf of the good people of Bielsa State and the government of Bielsa State, and indeed on behalf of the South South States, express my most sincere gratitude for your obligation, insight, and service to our zone, and particularly to our state. Well, that's been the Stories on Oil and Gas Forum for this edition. Thanks for joining us. It's all about corporate responsibility as far as NNPC is concerned. We all have to do personal responsibility. Let's do it and let's keep safe. Bye.